Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 39 and Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, and the Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And like I said, it's not in the scriptures, but scripture would say that he would probably be sold for 30 pieces of silver, making 10 pieces of silver a, uh, a prophet. Joseph, the greatest type of Jesus Christ in the Bible. That would only make sense. It could be wrong. And the Lord was with Joseph, as the Lord God was with Jesus. And he was a prosperous man. And you can see Acts chapter 10, 38. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. He's a doer of the word, not just a talker. Potiphar looked at Joseph, looked at his life, and said, you know what? God's with you. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. Now that's kind of a... Here's this guy. He is sold as a slave by Ishmaelites. Now remember, Ishmaelites, the prophecy is you're going to live amongst the nations. You're going to be a wild man. They're going to hate you. And you're going to hate them. And from these people, they buy this guy. Bought Joseph for, for service, for work. And it turns out that this guy, this slave that they, he bought... He puts entire everything into his house. That's not what the plan for a slave is. And yet Joseph, with God, God's hand involved in Joseph's life, Joseph is going to become the Savior, type of Christ, of the nation of Israel in famine. And when you read the book of Revelation and you study Daniel, you see that in the tribulation period it's going to be very hard to get food because a Jew cannot receive that mark. And yet they'll be driven out to the wilderness where God it will provide for their needs. This is remarkable. Joseph should never be in the position he is if it was anything but God. So... He made an overseer's house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house in the field. Now let's go to Genesis 30, 27. 30, 27. And see something also remarkable about Jacob. 30, 27. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I found favor in thy eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience, Joseph, that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Joseph and Potiphar. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. So here Laban acknowledges like Potiphar. There is something about you, young man. 
Because before you came, I did not have what I have. And now that you're here, now it's your character. That's important. Your character proves you serve God. And Jacob and Joseph were put into positions of high authority. Now, when you look at Potiphar, Unlike Laban, he, we already studied. He's that rich guy. Ooh, gold, silver, lights up his whole entire life. It's different for Potiphar. And yet it's kind of the same. With Laban is living in an area where there's gods of the cities. Every city had a god. Abraham came from the moon city. Ur. Potiphar is in Egypt. He's an Egyptian. He's under Pharaoh. He's in the army. Potiphar worships gods of everything. Sun, moon, Nile River, crocodile, this, that. God of the army, God of the harvest, God of sex, God of bunnies, God of everything. Even his ruler, Pharaoh, he is a god. And when Pharaoh dies, we're going to embalm him. We're going to put him as a mummy. We're going to put all his stuff in his tomb, even with his servants. Because he's a god and he'll survive the afterlife or end up in a museum. Which proves their gods were wrong. And he, in charge of an army, in charge of Pharaoh, looks at this one man who was sold as a slave and says, God, no plural, is with you. Now that's a remarkable statement from a, a man that worships polygods, more than one god. And we are looking at the character of Joseph because it's going to be very important. Our lives as Christians should be, when they look at us, you stand out. You are honest. I'll put you in charge. You are worker. And you're dependable, as Joseph was. That ought to be the Christian character. That is the character of Jesus Christ. What would Jesus do? He'd be honest. He'd be a hard worker. He'd be respected, even though they hated him. So, this is remarkable. And it came, in, came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. We can be a blessing to the world. If we do right. We can work for a company and bless our employer. If we do right. We can bless our city if we do right. What's going to happen when God calls all the Christians dead and alive away? I hate to use the expression, but hell on earth. <laughs> The period called the tribulation period without Christians. You say, why hasn't California fallen off into the Pacific Ocean? There may be some Christians over there right now that are praying for lost souls, for safe and comfort. Too many Christians I hear, oh, don't pray because we're having a picnic this weekend. You, know, you ought to be praying that you get the rain that you need. Here is a man of character. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Like Laban. He left all that he had in Joseph's hand. Money, servants, products, animals, china, whatever he had. Kitchen, living room, bedroom, bathroom. Storage center. Everything that Potiphar had, everything, went into Joseph's hand. That's remarkable for a slave. And we read he's just about 13 years old. Maybe 15 or 16 by now. That's a lot. He was hated by his brethren. And here he is being a hard worker. And he doesn't complain. He doesn't gripe. He does what he's supposed to do. And he trusts God. 
He left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had. Potiphar had no idea. But he knew one thing. When he opened up the cupboards, wow, it's full. When he looked at the, the flocks going out to the field, wow, there's a lot more than I had before. When he looked at the servants, they're happy, they're rejoicing, they're doing. The toilet paper was on the roll, there was toothpaste, there was the new toothbrush when he needed it. He had the, the king, whatever he needed, it was there. And you find this character in Proverbs 31 of the virtuous woman. Her candle goes not out by night. She feeds her household. Joseph is taking care of Potiphar's. He is completely reliable. And Potiphar knows it. Save the bread which he did eat. The only thing Potiphar had to worry about, oh, okay, my breakfast, okay, no, my lunch, oh, thank you, my dinner, oh, thank you. Not, it was there. He just had to sit down. only thing he had to do was sit down and eat in that house. Everything else was taken care of. And Joseph was a good God, a goodly person and well favored by everybody. And it came to pass, here we go, here comes Satan. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, Lie with me, lust of the flesh. Satan tempted Jesus with the lust of the flesh. Make these stones bread if you're really hungry. Feed yourself. Come on, Joseph. Let's have a little rendezvous. Let's have a little lust match here. Same thing. Satan hates when a man of character of God does right. He's going to send trouble. You better believe when you settle your mind, hey, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to do right. You better just look over your shoulder because there's Satan. And you better be under prayer because you don't know what Satan's going to use. Person, place, or thing called a noun. And he'll try to get you to do a verb which is wrong against God. But he refused. And said unto the master's wife, this Potiphar's wife, you know she's not even named. God says, don't even put that bimbo's name in there. And you find this woman in the book of Revelation too, the strange woman. She's a strange woman to Joseph. Behold, my master watcheth not what is with me in the house. He trusts me so much. He never questions me. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. True. There is none greater in this house than I. He is more than his owner. Joseph has more. Excuse me, more respect, more honor, more care than the person that owns it. Now, that's not Jesus Christ, what is? There's another type. I'm saying, you can, you can go through the story of Joseph and find type after type after type. There's a book out there. I forget how many he wrote about it. Uh, greater, he kept back. Uh, there is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me. Jesus has all that God has to offer. But they. The only thing God doesn't offer to Jesus is sin. And yet Jesus Christ took sin, my sin, our sin, all our sins upon the cross. Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness? And watch this, and sin against God. See, I wouldn't sin against Potiphar. Any sin that I do is against God. And that's where you need to realize with your sins. The first thing you do when you sin, you need to realize it's against God. You get it right with God first, then you get it taken care of if it involves another human, which usually does. You bring it to God... First, uh, First John 1 says, If thou confess thy sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That's God. And then you got to pray say, Lord God, you know, I sinned against you and I've sinned against that person. Lord God, help me to deal and get things right with him. So he tells the bimbo, uh-uh, 
you're married. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day. And 2 Timothy 2.22 says, flee youthful lust. And I'm wondering why Joseph did not go to Potiphar in his position and say, hey, you know what? We got a problem here, Potiphar. Respectfully and all that, your wife. I don't know. It doesn't say. That he hearkened not unto her. He wouldn't even give her the time of day. Come, Joseph, lay with me. <laughs> Come on, Joseph, lie with me. And it was four cattle, three goats, two lambs, and that guy took care of it. Joseph, come lie with me. Oh, I'm just folding the clothes and putting them right there just right. To lie by her and to be with her. And it came to pass about this time. There was, a, there was a certain time of the day. She knew the activities of Joseph. And the Bible records that he was so punctual on time that it was this time. What was this time? That Joseph went into the house like he always did. He was a timely fashion to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there with him. He's alone. And I remember I first started taking classes in, in Hartford, Connecticut for the Bible. One of the first lessons I learned as a man going to go into the ministry. Don't ever be alone with a woman. I remember the pastor teaching. He says, listen, he says, if you're in your office, if you've got a church and you're in your office and you're doing your church business, like you're, whatever you're doing. He says, you look out your window and you see whoever it is, Mrs. Smith, she comes in and, you know, she cleans the church or she does whatever she does. If it is you and Mrs. Smith going to be in that church, I don't care what you're doing. You get off your seat, you get in your car and you go down to McDonald's, you go down and get yourself a chicken sandwich. Don't you be in that church with your car alone and her car alone because your neighbors are going to be talking. Nothing may happen, but it doesn't look good. Never give your opportunity to be alone with a woman. And she may be the high respected woman of the church. She may not want to do what she's doing to Joseph here. But your neighbors will say, aha, uh -huh, that car belongs to her. And that's the pastor's wife. Uh -huh, what are they doing? Yeah. It's an awkward experience too. Because what if she does start to speak? This woman's going to end up lying. And she's going to tell a good lie. And Joseph has no one, no one to batch for him. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. I'm out of here. And it came to pass when she saw that he left, uh, that she saw that she, he had left his garment in her hand. And was fled forth. This is the second item of clothing that Joseph lost. Jesus Christ had clothing that they removed off him. Another type of Christ. Now Christ has five pieces. Joseph has had two. The coat of many colors given to his father. His brothers ripped it off him. And this says garment. We don't know what kind of garment. You know it. it you know, if I would assume by the, by the scriptures, I would say maybe this garment had four pieces. I, I, I would safely assume to say that because Jesus had five. But I, I could be wrong. But he has lost two pieces of clothing. One to his brothers and one to a woman that, that wants it. The clothes were forced off them. She grabbed him by his garment and he took off and the, and the garment remained in her hand. He had no doing over that. He did not leave it. He just got out of there. His brothers came and ripped off the, the coat off him. Jesus, they said and John that they took off his robe and they put a robe on him. They took off his clothes and put a robe on him. Jesus had no nothing to do with that. They did it. And she called unto the men of her house. Her house. So she had men over in her house. 
and spake unto them, saying, See, he has brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in and unto me to lie with me. And I cried with a loud voice, You liar. But what can Joseph say? He has no witnesses. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried. And he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. Mm, kind of. And she laid up his garment by her. Oh, this is Joseph's garment. Oh, it just smells like Joseph. Oh. Almost like one of them snuggles. Until his Lord came home. You know how she doesn't reference her as her husband? Calls him his Lord, his master, but never calls him husband. Lift up his garment with me and fled, and I got out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us, came in unto me to mock me. No husband, no dear, no kiss. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. She's charging him with rape. Attempt to rape. He loses his garment. He loses his job. But he doesn't lose his character. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife. Now it acknowledges the marriage. But not for her. She don't acknowledge this guy as her husband at all. I don't think this is the first time she's met with men. It's the first time she may have been rejected. Heard the words of, of his wife. Which she spake unto him saying. After this manner did thy servant to me. That his wrath was kindled. Someone violated my wife. I'm angry. I don't care who you are. And Joseph's master took him. And put him into the prison. A place where the king's prisoners were bound. Joseph is sent into the royal prison. This is no ordinary prison. This is a prison you have violated the government. Now I don't know. With America. If somebody does a crime worthy of president of prison to the president of the United States, I would assume maybe Leavenworth. I don't know. The charge here that happens to Joseph is as if he violated Pharaoh himself. Now this is how much cahoots that Potiphar has with Pharaoh. Pharaoh, I got this guy. He violated my wife. I want to put him in your prison. Okay, go ahead. Again, now we're going to see God still working. King's prisoners were bound. Bound. He was in chains. Psalms tells us that he was hurt with the shackles. And he was there in the prison. He doesn't write. He doesn't complain. He has been sold by his brothers. He has been falsely charged by this woman. He has been put into a pit. He's been sold. He is now in prison for false charges. What do we got to complain about? But the Lord was with Joseph. And showed him mercy. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The one that's in charge of the prison. Joseph, I like you. There's something about you. You're in charge. Well, how about that? Joseph now has a prison ministry. And he's going to be faithfully attending to the prisoners that are in his charge. Now, look how Joseph's been put in charge. Jacob, go check on your brother and see how they're doing and what's going on. Potiphar, this is my house. It is yours. You take care of it. The prisoner guard. Hey, those prisoners, they're under your authority. Jesus Christ does what the Father told him to do. Go check out the brethren, okay? Jesus Christ is faithful in the world, Egypt. 
He never sinned. And Jesus Christ, as far as the prison, have you read the book of Acts about prison and what happens in prisons in the book of Acts? Have you read about Onassis, a servant of Philemon, who was a slave, who went with Paul, who was a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and got saved? And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. He's a trustee in the prison, the Baptist Church of uh, Pharaoh's prison. He's the trustee. And he never asked for that position. He never was voted on that position. His character, his being with God, his life living by God, and God working with him, you're an important person. You're somebody who can be trusted. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, just like Potiphar. There's two people in life. If you're going to do a play or a script or a skit, you're going to act out something, you better not confess yourself to pretend to be Joseph or to pretend to be Jesus Christ. I call that blasphemy. If you have kids get up or, or uh, people get up say, we're going to do the life of Joseph, you be Joseph. You couldn't be Joseph. No way. Absolutely not. You know there's only one sin recorded by Joseph in the Bible? I'm talking about Jacob's son. I'm talking about Joseph that adopted Jesus. There's only one sin. He said to his to his man, to his servant, take that golden cup and put it in Benjamin's sack and make it look like Benjamin stole it. That's the only sin. You cannot have somebody get up and say, Oh, I'm gonna do the life of Joseph. Because it's been done on, on film. It's probably done in churches. It's probably done in Sunday school. Somebody will get up and pretend to be Joseph. You can't. This character of Joseph is so strong that people take one look at him and say, you're godly. You're right. And he just keeps on doing. He doesn't brag. And then how can you ever say that to pretend to be Jesus when he's absolutely perfect and you're not? The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under, the, under his hand, Joseph, because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper? Now, you got to ask yourself a question. He's in prison. What is prospering in the prison? <laughs> I've been in the prison ministry many years. I can't understand. What is God making him to prosper? More prisoners? I don't know. And the prisoners getting well taken care of because because of Joseph through God? Or is it possible that this man also has put Joseph in charge of his house out of the prison? In other words, he's doing the same job as, as Potiphar's house to this, this warden. But he's working satellite in the prison. And that, that could be another possibility. But whatever Joseph's doing, God is blessing because the love, the care... That he has in God. He says, listen, when I sin, I sin against God. That's something David said. Again, another person. If you pretend to be David in the Bible, in your movie, your script, or whatever you're doing, you can't. You can't. Because David sinned the two sins that are in the law that you cannot find grace, you cannot find mercy, and God says, the sure mercies of David, don't worry about it. Three remarkable men, Joseph, David, and Jesus Christ. I forget which is Ezekiel or uh, Jeremiah. It says Job, Daniel, this is the third man, I can't think of his name. Joseph is a great character to study and look at. Joseph is a great man to look at for Jesus Christ.